It's episode 28. You have three questions for me. I shall give you three answers. And we start with question one. And it's from the Co92 from Twitter at the Co92. There's your plug. Have you ever thought about visiting New York one day? I most certainly have. New York is one of those places in America that you have to visit at least once in your lifetime. Now, I have, sadly, not been afforded the opportunity to do so just yet. I got the opportunity to go to Los Angeles last year, as most people know, where I covered Night Rider Reunion that did, you know, did very well. So, made a difference there, and Los Angeles was a blast. I'd love to come back again one day, because uh, Los Angeles is a great city. You know, I'd love to have been able to explore more of it. But to, for New York, considering the kind of places that are seen in New York from things like Ghostbusters, Godzilla, the Spider-Man trilogy, the new Spider-Man, the new Amazing Spider-Man movie series, you look at those, you know, those places in New York that the movie would vi the, the movies would visit and you think, Love to visit that one day. Now, as most people know, Random DCE, Helsing 920, the mighty one, Harrison, and just keep this in mind, eh, the mother effing house got to go to New York four years ago. And as most people know, Random DCE got to meet the legendary Lily Livers, the queen of the rants. And I have to say this, Lils. We miss you on YouTube. Please come back. It's not the same place without you. Um, but yeah, I'd love to come to New York one day. An amazing city. The people people there are great. From what my brother told me from when he went there, I said, you know, dude, you gotta go. You gotta come here one day. Seriously, you gotta go there. So yeah, I do want to go to New York one day. Might happen in a year from now. Who knows? Question two from That Psycho Reviewer. He says, what are your favorite nostalgic, nostalgia critic reviews so far? I enjoyed his double review of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog, also known as Saturday Morning. A lot of what he said about Saturday Morning, it actually reflected my own view, my own uh, view, viewpoints and opinions. It was just the way it was a uh, well thought out story, decent ensemble cast, and whilst Adventures of was a little bit off the wall and not so much in regards to story, it was enjoyable. The other reviews I did enjoy, I, I actually enjoyed um, The Odd Life of Timothy Green. I thought, you know, for his first review back after, you know, taking what we thought was time off, but, you know, to go do demo reel. He came back fresh and I actually enjoyed it. And probably one of his other reviews that I did that I did enjoy was when he reviewed Captain Planet. Now, they say you shouldn't laugh at someone's despair or pain, but it, it's just his facial expressions alone when he had to it's like, well Captain Planet, what do you got to test up today? Hey, boom! You, you've been tested positive. Stop! DCs, get out of there while you still can! I enjoyed that because Doug does really, really good physical comedy. I recognize fully that Doug has talent as a reviewer and a comedian, and it was just satisfying when he did come back after that nice break off and came back to do Odd Life of Timothy Green. It's like, that's the nostalgia critic I know. It's like, you know, he's back. And the other review I enjoyed that he did was, I think you know where I'm going with this, Batman and Rob, especially with the, Bat credit card? They gave him a Bat credit card? <laughs> that and Superman 4. I thought those were very good. Uh, question 3. What is my favourite band? This is a tough one. Now, most people that know me are aware that when it comes to music, I like a bit of variety. Um, 
Grew up in the mid 90s, appreciating George Michael's music, although I feel like the guy has kind of lost focus in the last few years. My opinion, not narky, but I just feel like the quality is not what it once was. Um, I'd say favorite band, it's a tie between Jamiroquai and Huey Lewis and the News. Jamiroquai, it's kind of got that um, kind of like new school jazz feel because people say it's dance. I was like, it's like I listen to the stuff he, the, the stuff that uh, J.K. has put out over the last 20 years. I don't call that dance. It may be good stuff to dance to, but I just think of it as what it is. It's, you know, it, it's acid jazz. It's, it's a bit of new school jazz. And Huey Lewis, I knew of them, you know, well into the early part of the last decade, but it was when I sat down to watch Back to the Future for the first time as an adult. Now, I'd seen Back to the Future as a kid, but when I sat down properly for the first time as an adult to take everything in and appreciate it for what it was and actually listened to Power of Love and Back in Time, I was just like, I like these guys. And when you hear such songs off of their album 4, when you hear it's as simple as that, with the stuff that, they, that they're singing about, it's like... It's like, you know, I can actually relate to that. It's in a sense that, you know, what they were singing about some 25 years ago, it actually makes sense in today's, in today's society, in today's market. And Huey is, is one of those guys, I think he's sorely underrated. I noticed they kind of dipped off the off the radar towards the end of the 80s and into the 90s and that's and it's a darn shame because Huey Lewis is a very very talented musician and I don't know it probably would have helped if more movies like Back to the Future had picked it you know him and it, him and the group up for you know more songs to do first to do more soundtracks for movies but it is what it is but yeah, Jamiroquai and Huey Lewis in the News as my fa as my favourite band. So, at the end of episode 28, the place to send your questions to is Facebook, Twitter, and the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to blip.tv forward slash the MJ Knight for more updates. Until next time, class dismissed. <laughs>